Waltney Group, Remax Results. Welcome to Rochester Real Estate, featuring Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group Remax Results and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning, Andy Brownell with News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Of course, it's Saturday. That means we're chatting with Robin Gwaltney with Gwaltney Group Remax Results. Good morning, Robin. Good morning. How are you? I'm well. Yourself? Oh, I'm tired. I'm not going to lie. I've just been busy. <laughs> but okay, I'll, we're all I'll tired. make it through. I promise. I, I'll stay awake and I'll be very alert. Okay. Starting right now. Okay. I alert is, okay. <laughs> so this get-together on Saturdays is all about real estate, the real estate marketplace here in southeastern Minnesota. And it seems, I'm just my observing it seems as if things are really stable things are i don't know just what's the term balanced yeah you're right i mean i think we're like i've said many many times over it's i compare it to covid it's like there was so much rockiness and so much tension and so much stress and then we just kind of kind of started rolling with it you know it's like we understand it we know what to expect. We know that our friends and family are going to get, you know, positive tests. But we also know that just means, you know, we understand it. We're just, we're settled in. And I feel like that's where we're getting with the um, the real estate market now, too. You know, everybody was like, oh, my gosh, these rates are going up, 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 up. Next thing you know, they're going to be 7% or 8%. And no, I mean, look at gas prices have come down. Things are just kind of getting calm and steady. I was watching, um, what what was I watching? They were talking about, oh, it was on the Today Show, and they were talking about, you know, this big recession and prices are so high, yet the number of dollars that they expect to be spent on Halloween and Halloween costumes was like through the roof. It's hardly an indication of people not being able to make ends meet. And every place you go, every place you go has a now hiring sign. Have you been anywhere where you haven't seen that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's still very much a worker shortage. So I think things are just settling. Settling is a good word. And the interest rates have kind of settled right at that 5% mark. And from what I've read, experts expect them to stay right there through the year, you know, maybe up a little bit, down a little bit, and even projected forecasts for back into the fours by the end of next year. So I don't think we have to worry about them going much higher than they are right now. And if they do, I think it'll be very temporary, you know, up a little bit, down a little bit kind of thing. So I think it's kind of settled in right where it's going to be for a while. And that means if you're a buyer, you can plan. You can look you can ahead plan. Mm-hmm. and say, okay, at this interest rate, I can afford this much of a house. Exactly. Well, perfect. Yeah. And I think, um, okay, so I have a little more mortgage rate projection chart here. Okay. So in 2022 Q4, um, 5.2% for an average 2023 Q1, 5.3% for an average. 2023 Q2, 5.2%. And 2023 Q4, 4.8%. So, you know, we're not going to see anything going drastically high. We're not going to see anything going drastically low. So kind of think about that 5% as a magic number for a while. Okay. Well, it's always... (laughs) To me, it's calming to have an ability to have an anchor, I guess, when you're looking at something like this. Well, and so many people... You can factor it into your spreadsheet or whatever you do to calculate your budget. You're not dealing with the unknown. Yeah. And um, so many people are asking me, so is it still good time to sell my house or have these interest rates killed everything? Well, I am not going to lie. The interest rates have definitely affected a lot of buyers because for a while there, we had buyers that said, geez, you know, 
Robin, we weren't planning to buy our dream house for at least four or five years down the road, but we just can't pass up this interest rate. I mean, they saw that opportunity and took advantage of it. So a lot of people did lock in at, you know, 2.25, 2.5, 2.375, whatever it is, they locked in because they thought, all right, I can go out and spend 600, 700, 800, 900, a million dollars now when I didn't think I'd be able to do this for a while because of the interest rate. Okay, so they did it. So those same people, not those same people because they're in a house, but that same category of people will now say, I guess I'll wait the three, four, five years to buy my dream house, you know, keep, stay on the, the course that I've been on and I'll just... At that time, I'll still do it. So we don't have all those people who are jumping into the market ahead of time just because of the interest rates. Now, that doesn't mean that the people who were planning to buy and had been planning for the past five years to buy their next step up or their dream house or whatever aren't going to still do it because they are. Right. And we've talked about that before the pandemic, especially that regardless of what time of the year it is, there are always people who need to move. They have a job relocation, something right. family they related. Get married, right. Yeah, exactly. Life events. So um, I tell people, yes, definitely the interest rate has slowed down, especially in the higher higher end market. I mean, it just, it has. But they certainly are still selling and we still have a very low number of homes on the market relatively. Now, compared to like when it was crazy and things would get on the market and sell, it seems like we have a ton of inventory. <laughs> but if you look back the past few years, we still have a low amount of inventory. Well, so, we were already headed in that direction before the pandemic as well. I remember three years ago, four years ago, we'd be talking and that inventory number was slowly but surely going lower, 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 lower every quarter. So I, it's not a surprise that that's the situation today. Right. And I know that there are also a lot of people who think, oh, geez, you know, now I've waited. I've waited too long because now if I sell my um my $350,000 house because I, I'm really ready. Our family's grown. The kids are getting big, you know, whatever. To move up to that $600,000 house, ugh, the payments are going to be so much tougher with the re- interest rates up at 5%. Well, this is the other thing that they need to think about. The amount of equity that they've built over the past few years with these... Um, With the values going up at these crazy, you know, 15% year over year, 18% year over year, 20% year over year, instead of three or five or, you know, so they're going to have that extra equity to put down too. So it always, it does work out. Yeah, that's, I think you're right. That's the part that people don't think about that if you didn't sell your home or buy a home during that period, you still did gain advantage from what happened in that home equity part of the equation. Oh my gosh. Your net worth is quite a bit higher than it used to be. Exactly. And it's so lovely. And that's why I've said, you know, over and over, you hear me say, your house is your bank account that you live in. Because if you keep building that equity, that is how you will build wealth. I mean, that is what most people depend on when it comes to later years, when it comes to retirement. They depend on the wealth that they've they've built through owning real estate. Absolutely. So it's, it's key. Why don't we take a quick break and we'll come back. Okay. Robin good. Gwaltney with the Gwaltney Group Remax Results with us on a Saturday morning here on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Do you ever ask yourself, what's my purpose? Why am I just going through the... Lee from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back. 
Robin Gwaltney with the Gwaltney Group Remax results here on the Saturday morning. <laughs> I, I'm, I guess I'm emphasizing Saturday. It's almost like the weekend a lot, Robin. Yeah, well, you know, today, this weekend is Watermelon Festival. So oh, yeah. if, um, yeah, if people are looking for something fun to do over in Kellogg, tons of things. I mean, they have, a, if you look up, um, online their schedule of activities they really put together a nice little festival over there they've got a fun melon market this morning where i'm going to be headed when i'm done here and there's going to be some i'll take my umbrella (laughs) but there's going to be some shopping um you know lots of vendors just a lot of fun stuff and then tomorrow i think two o'clock is their grand parade which uh yours truly will be walking in and throwing out all kinds of fun gwaltney group stuff I never knew that Kellogg was known for watermelons. Oh, yeah. The Sand Prairie, actually, which is, you know, right down by Kellogg because sand sure. is what's good for... Yeah. And yeah. So then they have free watermelon and after the parade, I believe, is when they do that. But anyway, it's a fun little event. So, like I said, if someone's looking for something fun okay. to do this weekend, there you go. Plug for Watermelon Festival. Well, Robin, right before we took the break, we kind of casually mentioned this business about... Well, you, you said it. It's the bank account that you live in. Right. And I think anybody who has any equity in their home right now is nodding their heads big time because we've all seen (laughs) over the last two years our homes increase in value at a rate that nobody expected. And I read so many articles, and I'm not just saying this because I'm in real estate, you know, because I sell real estate. I also buy real estate because I believe it. And so many articles about how buying real estate, investing in real estate is such a um, more solid and secure investment than any other. And it does build people a lot of wealth. I found a really interesting article and it, it all came to me because of you telling me that your daughter was uh, second guessing buying a house and is she making a big mistake? And oh my gosh, she is absolutely making the best decision of her life. Check this out. A report from the National Association of Realtors details several home ownership trends, including significant gap in net worth between homeowners and renters. It finds that the net worth of a homeowner was about $300,000, while that of a renter was $8,000 in 2021. To put that into perspective, the average homeowner's net worth is roughly 40 times that of a renter's. This different shows that owning a home is the key step in achieving financial success. Boom. That really, really highlights that, doesn't it? It really does. That's crazy when you think about those numbers. And is that, I guess, for comparable household incomes? Yes, that's exactly what it is. And it goes on to say that home ownership is still considered one of the most reliable ways to build wealth. When you make your monthly mortgage payments, you're building equity in your home. When you rent, you aren't investing in your financial future the same way that you are when you're paying off a mortgage. That's you know pretty darn obvious. But on top of that, your home equity grows even more as your home appreciates in value over time. So it's not just those payments that you're paying off that's building equity. It's that increase in value. Yes. So it's like a double whammy, right? And building home equity can help you increase your wealth over time. A home is one of the only assets that has the potential to appreciate in value as you pay it down. So... As a renter, you will never see a return on the money that you pay out in rent every month. Bottom line, owning a home is an important part of building your own net worth. If you're ready to start on your journey, let me help you. I'd love to. So I have one client right now. I might have told you about her last week. I just can't get over it. She's a young nurse at Mayo Clinic. She is renting a one bedroom apartment and she is paying nineteen hundred dollars in <laughs> rochester minnesota that'll buy you a nice house that's for sure well yeah and then she has a friend who she works <laughs> with and her friend has a one bedroom apartment and she's paying fourteen hundred a month so between the two of those gals they're paying thirty three hundred dollars a month to rent so the one that i'm working with is going to buy a nice place 
and rent to her friend. Yeah. She's going to cut her friend's rent way down while helping pay off her mortgage. And that is what I call a smart little cookie, making a great investment. And it's something that I think a lot of these young professionals should really be thinking about. Especially if you think, right, it's a win-win situation. The person who's renting from you is paying a good chunk of your mortgage. Right. So (laughs) in the end, they're going to live in a much better place than either of them lives in now. They're still going to have separate spaces and their own privacy. They work opposite shifts, which is a perfect situation for roommates. And they um, will each be paying approximately half of what they're paying now. Wow. To have a better place. So there you go. Well, it, it, and you mentioned the rents. That, yeah. It, it, that even applied when we moved into this house back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. But that was the decision <laughs> that we made. That We sat there and almost immediately after getting married and we were renting and looked at what we were paying in rent. And I looked around and said, you realize we could buy a house for the same amount? Maybe... $100 more to cover the taxes and insurance than we're paying for this. What are we doing? Let's let's yeah. go. Good for you. Good for you. That was quite smart of you. You were, uh, <laughs> uh, you were ahead of your time there. Oh, I don't know. I, I think it was just that time in life where you, you finally wake up. Oh, you mean grow? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I get it. Yeah. No, and the thing is, is I think it's just a lot of it is that People just don't know. Like, for instance, this young gal, she said, I would have done this last year had I known that I could do it with 3% down. She said, I've always oh. thought I had to have 20% down. Yeah. And she said, my parents told me that. And she said, my mom told me that if I don't have 20% down, I'm going to have to pay this huge chunk of mortgage insurance. Well, it turns out that she's going to be paying about $71 in mortgage insurance. So $71 added to her payment, that is 71 bucks that she's kind of throwing out, but boy, that or $1,900 a month? Right. And it's with a that, no-brainer. And with that PMI part, the increasing equity is a key yeah, factor she'll, in that she'll because get rid of it faster. Yeah. people always think, oh, I'll have to you know, hold on to that until I have 20% or pay it down by 20%. And it's not. It's, as you pointed out, it's a combination between the two. And right. you'll reach yeah. that 20% quicker than you think. And that's something that I always watch for my buyers. So I just keep an eye on the values of their properties. So they may not have heard from me for two years other than a, you know, email here or there. And I will call them up and say, hey, just to let you know, we can probably get your mortgage insurance dropped because your house has gone up enough. And with what you've paid down, I think you're at that mark. And they're just like, really? (laughs) <laughs> and they're always they're always so happy to hear from me and just well, happy yeah. that I'm watching out for them and and that I care because I don't want them to have to pay that extra money if they don't have to. Well, that's fantastic. We have to take another break already, so we'll do oh, that. Wow. <laughs> we'll be back in just a, just a few seconds with more of Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. You wash your hands and brush your teeth, but what about your nose? State with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We are back with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, here on News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Robin, uh, any new stats out there that we can talk about regarding the market? Yeah, I can give you a few of the market report numbers, but I do want to say one thing that I forgot to say earlier um, regarding the mortgage rates. Don't forget to shop around. Mm. You know, just like when you're out buying gas, you'll go from one gas station to another and you'll see it as much as 10 cents less per gallon, right? So um, just because you have a banking relationship with a certain bank, doesn't mean that's where you're going to get your best rate. So when it does come time uh, to get pre-approved and to get that mortgage, make sure that you're asking me or the realtor that you're working with like what they suggest because I always give the names of at least two or three institutions and there's some lenders that have a 
product that's right for the specific needs of the buyer that another lender may not have. Uh, things like rural housing, they don't you know everybody doesn't do it, or right. um, doctor's loans, everybody doesn't do those where the physicians get 0% interest, but there are three or four institutions that do. So it's up to us to know how to guide you to do that best. So it does matter where you get your mortgage on what they're going to have as far as um, the amount of interest you pay and the different products that they have available to fit your needs. So I just wanted to quick say that. Perfect advice. Okay. All right. So let's just take a quick, quick look at Rochester's real estate market. Right now, we have 211 pending homes and 245 active. We have 87 homes that have gone off the market in the past six months. Mm. And I'll tell you what a lot of that has to do with. A lot of people put their house on the market because they're trying to buy a house. So because we're back into that mode where people will accept uh, offer contingent on the sale of someone's house. Well, if it gets bumped by an offer that's not contingent, those people no longer want to sell their house because gotcha. they can't buy the one they wanted. Okay. So that's what a lot of that has to do with. In the past six months, we've had 1,155 homes sold and closed, and which is, it's nice. You know, I mean, we're we're humming right along. People ask me from other markets, what's your market doing? Are you guys getting really quiet? Are you really slowing down? And I'm like, absolutely not. Our market is strong and people are buying and people are listing and it's a very, very good time to be in the real estate market. Uh, of the houses that are on the market right now, most of them are between two hundred and five hundred thousand dollars. And I'm going to say, oh gosh, probably seventy five percent of the houses on the market are between two hundred and five hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's actually so, a great statistic because that's yeah. where most of your buyers most are. Most of lined our buyers up. are. Yep, it is. It, it does line up. So as far as what we have for our absorption rate and our homes on the market, which is really important for people who are wondering, should I sell my house this year? You should be listening to this because under 100,000, we have a half a month of inventory. Up to 200,000, we have a half a month of inventory. Between 200 and 300, we have one month of inventory. Between 300 and 400, we have three weeks of inventory. Between 400 and 500, we have a month and a half of inventory. Wow. Yeah, it's like that all the way. It doesn't get past two months until we get to 600 to 700, we've got two and a half months. 700 to 800, we've got two and a half months. 800 and 900, we have almost three months. But... Um, between 900 and a million, we only have one month's worth. And between a million and a million one, we only have three months worth. Now, if you're getting higher than that, you're definitely going to be waiting long. You know, you're, it's going to take longer to sell. Between a million two and a million three, we've got six months worth of inventory. And between a million three and a million four, we don't have any inventory. But between a million four and over, we've got 10 months worth of inventory. So if you're trying to sell a house that's uh, over a million four, it might take you a year. So Be patient. Yeah, be patient. Doesn't mean you're not going to sell it. But again, we don't have all those buyers that were buying higher based on the low interest rates. So, And those statistics right there tell you it, it's still a strong seller's market oh my gosh it is it is such a healthy real estate market healthy i think healthy is the word i'm gonna okay. kind of cling to because i feel like we just are in a really healthy real estate market i mean when so, things are going on the market you're telling me in most price ranges within a month you've got a seller or a buyer and other aspects that make it healthy in my opinion my personal opinion is people can um negotiate a little bit they can get a home inspection and not lose out on the offer because three other people are willing to buy it without sure. one. Um, just It's just so much more stable and just healthy. So well, people are still getting great houses for great prices and sellers are still getting great prices for their homes. So it's a win-win. And yeah, we just keep moving right along. So before we run out of time, do you have any new listings you want? I, I have a couple. I think I have them here. I hope I do because I don't have them memorized. But I have a couple I wanted to talk about. 
Jeez, I feel a little unorganized here, Andy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's Saturday, right? I told you I was tired. I wasn't lying. I've got it. You've got a lot of papers, I can tell. You can hear me, can't you? <laughs> well, I always like to try to print things out so I can reference back to the articles that I'm talking about. Okay, I found them. Okie dokie. So I've got one, two, five, four, Sundance Court Northeast in Byron. And this one is a three bed, two bath with a two car garage built in 2004. It has 1,592 square feet and it is 249.9. Wow, nice. Uh huh. And then I have an. People really do love Byron, and they love that Byron school district. So Byron is usually a really hot seller. Okay, maybe I only had one. I thought I had two. No, I guess that's the only new one I have. New one, okay. Yep. Well, you can find all of the other ones at the website. Online. Yes, yes. Go to our website at gwaltneygroup.com. And that's G-W-A-L-T-N-E-Y-G-R-O-U-P.com. And again, you can always call my cell phone at 507-259-4926. And there is an eager member of the Gwaltney Group just waiting to help you. All right, Robin, thank you again so much for sharing your expertise with us. All right, you have a wonderful weekend. You as well. It's Robin Gwaltney with Gwaltney Group Remax Results on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. This is 